Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bald and Bonkers show. Join your hosts Christopher Mole and Dakota Franson as they take you on a wild ride through the world of the supernatural with a humorous twist that'll have you laughing and shaking in your boots at the same time. From ghosts to aliens to cryptids, no topic is off limits on this show. And the best part? You don't have to be a believer to join in on the fun. So grab a drink, kick back and tune in every weekend for new episodes. And if you want even more of the Bald and Bonkers experience, be sure to subscribe to our Patreon page for exclusive content you won't find anywhere else. Let's get weird. Oh, and for the whiners out there, viewer discretion is advised. There you go, you entitled pricks. Well, welcome ladies and gentlemen to another awesome show. We this is probably going to be one of our best ones yet, yeah. without a doubt. We are welcoming Paul Dale Roberts. He's worked Army Intelligence. He's done several investigations, and right now, when it comes to the UFO topic, nothing's getting hotter right now. So, yeah, thank you so much for coming on board. Oh, thank, yeah, thank you so you, much, Paul. Thank you, Christopher. Great. So, well, Chris, you wanted to start or? Well, actually, but I was just going to say, Paul, could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you go about a bit about your army intelligence days, just a little bit, so we can open it up for the audience. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> from 1973 to 1976, I was in the U.S. Army. I was an MP, military policeman, and I was working undercover narcotics for the Drug Suppression Team CID Criminal Investigation Division. So I did that for a while. Then I got out for three years. So I had a three-year break. During that time, believe it or not, is I became the disco king of Sacramento. I danced 205 <laughs> hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. He told me. He told yeah. me that you were an anti disco. Hey. Oh, my God. This has got to be great. So I danced eight, oh and, a half days, eight and a half days with a five-minute break on every hour. For the Guinness Book of World Records, and for uh, um, I was in Ripley's, believe it or not. So, anyone, if you guys don't want to believe it, all you have to do is Google Paul Dale Roberts Disco, and you'll see it. But uh, 1979, after Disco died, and I knew my dancing career was going downhill, I joined the Army again. And I went military intelligence. I was a 97 Bravo intelligence uh, analyst. And I went to school at Fort Huachuca, Arizona. And I was stationed at Photo Interpretation Center in Korea, Mm -hmm. P-I-C-K, at Yongsong Barracks at the 501st Military Intelligence Group. And during that time, working at the Photo Interpretation Center in Korea, on one particular day, six photographs came in. And on these six photographs were pictures of different type of UFOs. And they were bo- mm-hmm. part of a bigger picture, a video of these UFOs taken by our reconnaissance satellites and reconnaissance aircraft. And cool. on the back of the photograph, <clears throat> it said intelligent movement. So that tells me that after Project Blue Book was closed down in 1969, the military was still interested in UFOs. And yeah. the, the photographs were everything from a disc shape, a uh, triangular shape, <laughs> something that looked like a globe, something that looked like ball lightning. It was yeah, like mm-hmm. a ball of electricity. Um uh, you had a, a cube. And so with these UFOs, I knew that at that part at that part of time, that military intelligence was still investigating UFOs and that we yeah. were not alone. So um, can that I, was very interesting. Can I ask, did, would you ever, was there any like higher ups ever told you, listen, Listen, it says, don't talk about this subject. Do you do ever, ever talk about this subject? 
did, every, did MD ever come in? Did MD like suspicious looking like the men in black or anything like that kind of thing? Ever like civilian looking would come around when these things were showing up? Um, no, I mean, I was never visited by the men in black. No. Uh, yeah, but here's the interesting thing is that at the 38th parallel in, in, uh, in Korea, Mm-hmm. We actually had to wear black suits. We couldn't wear any kind of insignia indicating that we we're military yeah. intelligence because we could get arrested on the spot. So in turn, we were the men in black. So and, in. and you walked oh. around the table and you're in the North Korean side. So yes. they, what was so funny about that is that when we did that little field trip to the 38th parallel, uh, they tell you, don't touch the table, don't put anything on the table. And I was taking photographs, and I put my camera on the table, and my captain came up to me. He goes, are you trying to do an, get an international incident here? You're going to be arrested yeah. for putting that camera on the side of the table. It was like, I wasn't yeah. even It was like, oh, God. But um, – the, uh, during my time with military intelligence, I worked with image interpreters. And so they could tell you like a little dot was a T-72 tank. And we were studying yeah. North Korea and Red China. It's, and it's, we, would, it's, we, would it's, go, it's, we would go in an unmarked vehicle. And you can travel as fast as you can. No policeman will stop you. He had a little play card on the car. It says, do not stop this vehicle for any reason. And we would go to Osan Barracks to get uh, the hot rolls. And the hot rolls mm-hmm. were the film taken by our re- reconnaissance aircraft. And um, I would have one half of the combination to open up the trunk of the car and the driver he would have the other combination to open up the trunk. And then there was a suitcase with me, again, having one half of the combination, and he would have one half of the combination and open up the suitcase and put the hot rolls in. So um, there was one other particular day, too, that came in, and this doesn't have anything to do with uh, UFOs, but we're talking about 1981, and a photograph came in. It looked like an American being escorted by Vietnamese soldiers, the Viet Cong. And this is 1981. And on the back of the photograph, it said POW question mark. So, and then later on in the newspaper said that our special forces knew about POW still in Vietnam in 1981. You see that's, and I held a, that. Oh, so that is very, very. I was. I was just going to say it, it's very interesting that because the I have watched documentaries of like how the POWs still in after the are totally after the Vietnam War, but what it stresses me back to back to North Korea for a second. North Korea is so locked up, as everybody knows. And I r- remember that thing, Dakota maybe no remember it, but I know that you will, Paul. Remember the time it was at the US military, was it a spy plane? It had to land in Korea. And, and, and it, it actually went through, they wanted it back, but the, obviously the North Koreans struck it down and took it apart and then sent, obviously they looked at everything. It's something like North Korea, there's not much information comes out of there. And it makes you wonder what UFOs or what strange things that they have encountered. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's just a lot of things going on. We, we, were, we did Operation Tango, and we were taken on a bus, and they blacked out the windows, so we couldn't yeah. see where we were going. But we went inside a mountain, Deep into a mountain, and it was a listening post for North Korea and Red China. So as soon as you got in there, you saw these type of computers, listening devices, and that's what we did. We're inside this mountain. Where it was, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, 
and you you have to have a need to know. So like I had to work in one room and I didn't know what was happening in the other room. And I wasn't allowed, yes. there was like a, a MP, military policeman, that mm -hmm. would not allow you to go into the other room because you didn't have a need to know. So I don't I know do. what they were doing in the other room. I just knew what we were doing in my, my room. Yeah, it's, I, I've, heard, I've heard of this. It's like, it's like, for instance, like the iPhone factory. Like, I've, there's a different section of buildings, right? And nobody knows what's happening in the next part of the building. So you're doing your thing. But is there might be a guy in the next room with like satellite photos, and then there might be a guy in the next room with like maybe listening devices. It's it's a very interesting place, the North Korean border, because because I do know that South Korea is still still to this day at war with them. What I've been what I've been told, they're no obviously they're no shooting at each other. Well, they're now and again they fire like a missile over each other, but it makes you wonder. Anything like for ET related has ever happened in North Korea? Is do, do your knowledge? Do you think there's been any ET related stuff happened in North Korea? Uh, the, the only thing is that my job was just to be concerned about yeah. if there was any kind of build up. It looks like you know some kind of intention for war, but. Um, and we would look at these sit maps and they would be marked. And during my time there, all I saw was training, a lot of training, but nothing that was a threat to us. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. So being that the UFO topic is such mm -hmm. mainstream nowadays, what are your thoughts on some of the department of defense's remarks lately? Like that there's a, mothership that's close to earth and all these ufos may actually be some kind of probes scouting us out for some big event here in the near future yeah i i think that we're actually getting very close to disclosure because you have all these private corporations that are talking about hey we're going to colonize mars by 2050 or whatever and with everything coming so close and with these private organizations that they don't really seem to have control of, like Elon Musk, I don't, I don't think they have control over him. And with that said, things are going to start opening up. And, it, and the military is starting to open up already. It's like when they're shooting down the UFOs and they were saying it was cylinder type shape and they don't know how it was aloft. It, 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 it are like giving you hints that it's coming from somewhere else. And the only answer to that is that it, it probably comes from a mothership. They're probably sending out their drones. They're observing Earth. And it's just a matter of time when all this information is going to come out and they're going to say, yeah, we're not alone. And we we were never alone. Do do you think being in the military and stuff? Do you think that the government say like well, I'll just pick one off USA, the US government? Would you say that they've got a plan ready for like a, a, like an alien invasion? Would you say they've got a plan ready to roll the day that that comes out? <clears throat> I, I don't ever think there'll be an alien invasion or anything like yeah. that. Um, I think they, the extraterrestrials jump-started mankind. They're observing us. Um, I don't think they would ever allow, let's say, a nuclear conflict because you had all these type of UFOs uh, in England and in the United mm -hmm. States and even in Russia who shut down these nuclear facilities. So they had that capability so I don't think they'll let us destroy ourselves. Plus, I think they have a lot of UFO bases in the oceans, yeah. in mountains, mm -hmm. and everything else. In a lot of my studies, uh, it, it appears that, they're, you know, like Mount Shasta. I, I, I investigated Mount Shasta. Mm -hmm. And Mount yeah. Shasta, 
you have reports of the Lemurians living right. underneath Mount Shasta. Uh -huh. And you have UFOs that go in and out of the mountain. It, you got Bigfoot over there, and Bigfoot is associated with UFOs. I mean, mm -hmm. there's they have a lot probably invested on Earth, so they would yeah. never allow it to get out of hand and where we destroy ourselves. I just don't believe that. See, I find that quite interesting about the Pacific. Because the Pacific's where a lot of UFO sightings have been, and that there was was it the was it the Pacific that was it the Seventh Fleet Dakota the the two fighter jets chasing after the the tic -tac -tac after UFO the, the, yeah. the tic -tac UFO and the pilots like God I want to show you that whatever that is and the thing was moving it just it was it was moving so fast it just stopped and it would go up the way it would go left and it would zoom off again. It, and it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. Obviously, the extraterrestrials there, but like, look at the, the earthlings that they're chasing us about and their toys again. And it's true what you say about underwater bases because the Pacific has been well known for ships disappearing and strange things happening. What is it today? It was it uh, today with Japan to go to the? Is a, 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 a triangle? And it actually, yeah, I think the it was a bit of Korea. Yeah. The dragon's triangle, and I think <clears throat> a bit of Korea is actually in that too. And for thousands of years, people have talked that there's like myths and legends that come from the Pacific. It's it's fascinating what could be in that water below the surface of the water. Yeah, and you know, it's just like with I, I did my investigation over Skinwalker Ranch, and I did my investigation over Area Fifty One. Yeah. And when I went to Area Fifty One, I brought three investigators with me and yeah. we went up to the gate and of course we didn't cross over into area 51 mm -hmm. because we didn't want to get arrested but they take it very seriously at that gate and i was looking at my yeah. binoculars of things that are going around by the gate and i saw this yeah. one guy and he's looking at me with his binoculars and he's wearing camis. Yes. And then he's also mm -hmm. too strapped on him is a sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. And he points the sniper rifle right at me while I'm looking at him with binoculars. And I told my investigators, I said, it's time to go. Yeah. And they claim, uh, well, two of them claim that as we were leaving, that they saw a UFO flying along the hillside. I didn't see it. Um, it was really nice is that there was the alien inn and we got mm -hmm. to uh, camp out right in the parking lot. The owners, they said, yeah, you can camp out right here. And we did. And they also too took us on an ATV and took us to an abandoned village at area 51. Why it yeah. was abandoned. I don't know. We did soil samples over there and it seemed like the soil was eradicated uh, for unknown reasons. And I sent the uh, soil samples to this UFO group, and they had it analyzed. And what was kind of interesting about the soil is that there was, like, tiny little wires in the dirt. So I don't know what that was about. And so we that, interviewed... That, I'm is sorry. that kind of like nanotechnology? Is that kind of nanotechnology kind of stuff? Yeah, it could, I've be. Heard that. it could be. I've heard that yeah. at Area 51, people have found strange things in the soil. Yeah, it, it, it very, yeah. And it was kind of interesting because as for the soil samples, it was the UFO group that told me to collect some soil samples, which I did. Um, we interviewed some pe people from the alien, and one individual, this gentleman, he claimed that he worked at Area 51, and that Bob Lazar, he can confirm yeah. that Bob Lazar actually did work at Area 51 in S4. And he was never allowed in S4, so he doesn't know what's going on over there. But according to Bob Lazar, they were reverse engineering UFOs uh, in S4. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. um, 
so he was confirming that Bob Lazar, yeah, definitely worked at Area 51. And mm -hmm. also, too, we interviewed this young lady, and she claims up and down that there was a craft that had wings that actually went to her eye level, and the pilot waved at her and then shot straight up. I knew it. Yeah. yeah. They screw <laughs> people. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that was very interesting. Area 51, you know, we got a lot of good information out of there. As for Skinwalker Ranch, that's another story. Um, that one, I took two investigators with me. And what was so funny is about Skinwalker Ranch and Area 51, when I first became a paranormal investigator, yeah. um, we would have these meetings. And then there would be people going, oh, I would love to investigate Area 51, or I would love to investigate Skinwalker Ranch. Well, when I came on board, I said, let's just do it. Let's just drive over there and do it. And that's what we did. And um, as, as for Skinwalker Ranch, we never actually went to the ranch, but we were in the valley, which I, I think is called mm -hmm. YouTube Valley or something like that. Mm -hmm. That whole valley has something going on over there. It's not just the ranch. That whole valley does. And what, it, it was storming. What is, your, what is, your, opinion? What is uh, your opinion on that valley? What would you say was, would you say there was more paranormal as spirit activity? Or would you say there was more UFO activity? Because I've seen, obviously, I've seen the Skinwalker Ranch thing that's on Discovery Plus and stuff. But I've seen these things in the show. UFOs and stuff like that, but from your perspective, would you say it was mere a mixture of ET and spiritual stuff? Yeah, I think it's a mixture. It all comes together. Uh, mm. The poltergeist activity, yeah. the bulletproof dog. Uh, I mean, not I was <laughs> a, it was bulletproof wolf uh, that was yes. chewing on that calf in the Sher Sherman family. They shot at it, shot at it, and it continued to move on. Uh, a scientist from NDIS um, said that the, there was a portal that opened up in the sky and some kind of creature that looked like Bigfoot came out of the portal. So, yeah, I think it's all connected. Mm -hmm. And I'm really looking forward to watching uh, The Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch, the new season, mm -hmm. because now it seems like they actually got some type of metallic object in that mesa and with that metallic object could it be a buried ufo that's See, that's that's <laughs> a real da -da. that's yeah. weird you say that i've been watching i've been watching a lot of people that have investigated that place before obviously discovery channel and stuff like that and i think there is something buried there i think there's something really big buried there underground and I think it's feeding off the energy for the air because obviously you've got the ley lines that run there and you've got the Native American tales of what they seen like maybe like five, six hundred years ago the strange figures moving about. I mean, it, it could be possible. I mean, it, say six hundred years ago an alien spaceship was buried there. And it, that's maybe what's causing all these weird energy things. And as we know, mm -hmm. and Dakota can probably ping with us, that spirits like energy. There's, they tend to come about, they tend to do more stuff, they tend to see more if there's like ley lines running through there. It's a, it's a fascinating place. Dakota? Now, what I've heard about alleged insiders is that some of the reports of like poltergeist activity at, say, like Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and I would imagine several spots around Area 51 yeah. as well, that's not ghosts. That's people screwing around with alien tech bigfoot yeah. i'll be honest i've personally done investigations in the bigfoot i've had my own encounters and even had a foot casting validated by dr meldrum and i, I was initially skeptical about the et side of things at first because it doesn't take much to mess up a human's perception but nevertheless the more you go into it the stranger things get i mean, 
Mount Shasta in itself is a bucket list location of mine because the number of people I've heard say (laughs) that place lights up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. Yeah, when I did Mount Shasta, we also, too, did a Bigfoot hunt. And uh, Bigfoot is supposed to communicate with wood on wood. So I took a piece of wood and I hit it against the tree three times. And I did this maybe three or four times. And on the last time that I did it, it was three rocks thrown into the creek behind me. Mind you, there was Mm. nobody around. Mm. And no bear could pick up that rock and throw it into the creek three times. And so I think that I made some kind of communication with Bigfoot by hitting the tree three times, and he threw three rocks into the creek to respond to me. And that in itself was spectacular. And that's probably the closest I ever came to Bigfoot. And we also, too, we had a secretary there of, she was the secretary for Sylvia Brown, the psychic. And the secretary said that she was psychic. And she says, Paul, I feel like there's something behind me. Take a picture. So I took the photograph, and behind her was a disc-shaped UFO that was in an angle like this. And it was like, you couldn't see it with your eyes, but it was like, wow, you know, there was something there, you know, it's in the photograph. And that photograph actually went viral and it went all over the place and wind up in some guy's book, uh, Timothy Beckley's book. Hmm. So, um, hmm. so that was my, my experience over Mount Shasta. See, I find, I find it very interesting with Bigfoot. And then I'm going to hand this over to Dakota in a minute after I say this. I'm just going to... Bigfoot likes to turn up at a lot of these weird locations. I've noticed that. And what I've heard and what I've researched and stuff like that, there's different sects eh, of Bigfoot. You've got, obviously, I think you've got the primitive ones that live in the woods and keep it to themselves and they don't like it if you can hear them and stuff. But then I think you've got the technologically advanced ones that fly about in these kind of ships. But I don't think that they're actually from outer space. I think they're from a different reality. I think they come from a different existence on this plane. You know, like doorways opening up uh, different realities. Dakota, because you, I know you're the man that knows a lot more about this than I do. There's some... Nope. ...that the uh, alleged lost dwarf planet that used to be where the asteroid belt is and why believed by some scientists to be why the asteroid belt is so thick is because it got destroyed somehow is that they may be refugees from another planet like i said i don't know i'm try to be careful when i make these types of claims because i just don't yeah. want to feel like i'm shooting it in the wind here because yeah you start shooting when bigfoot's around they might try to throw <laughs> something back at you <laughs> like a big rock yeah i was like now in my experience which actually makes me wonder if there's something buried not too far from me because a few months back, a Bigfoot sighting was actually called in to local police. And the main reason I know that is because my mom's a police dispatcher. And anytime they have something weird like that come up, I'm usually one of the first people they tell. It's like, go check this out. Go check this out. But my experience didn't, ne- they weren't necessarily. Yeah, they were checking us out, but they were mostly keeping to themselves until I laid out a mm-hmm. chocolate bar as bait, and I had a juvenile yeah. approach me. And I wanted to get a photo, but the second I jumped, realizing what was going on, that thing took off. Wow. Little, ba- little bastard was fast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got something in common, Dakota. My Aunt Josie Hudson, uh was, she's now retired was a CHP uh, uh, radio dispatcher mm-hmm. for the, the California Highway Patrol. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, she has a lot of <laughs> interesting stories. But, uh, oh, and, and w- w- with uh, Skinwalker Ranch, when we drove yeah. up there, there was this big storm. But what uh, one of the things that was interesting that we saw, and we're trying to set up tents, we're falling in the mud and the whole works. Um, but 
the sky almost seemed like it opened up and there was ball lightning that actually slammed down and then exploded into all kinds of sparks. So that's the first time I saw this natural phenomenon, ball lightning, and that was at Skinwalker Ranch. And I, I think Skinwalker Ranch is like on a ley line. And that's why yes, UFOs are so attracted to that ley line because they use it for energy, maybe for their craft or whatever. I mean, yeah. UFOs are seen around volcanoes. So mm-hmm. you have that going on. And we, and, and it's that. Was, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was, just going, I, was just, I was just going to say that I found that very interesting because a lot of like UFO videos I've seen lately are strange orbs coming in and out of volcanoes. Some active volcanoes and some volcanoes that have maybe been not active maybe for about 100 years. And I've noticed they take great, whoever these entities are or wherever they're from, they take great respect in what is in there. It makes you wonder, have they maybe done something to maybe stop that volcano from erupting in the past? Because you see them shooting down into it and then shooting out. Or are they using that as like a gateway to, like, say, for like Mount Shasta? Are, are they using that as a gateway to go into the mountain? Oh, absolutely. I, 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 it could very well be some portals there. Well, e- even that one scientist, the NDIS uh, scientist over at a Skinwalker Ranch, he said that a portal opened up in the sky and this Bigfoot yes. creature came out. So. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Also, too, you guys know who J. Allen Hynek is, the professor? Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, for the Center of UFO Studies in Chicago? Yes. Yeah. I actually got to talk to him in 1976. And what's really odd, when in 1974, when I was in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, I was with two army soldiers and we were in the town of Columbia and we Mm -hmm. looked up in the sky and there was six blue discs in formation flying in the sky. And then all of a sudden they just kind of scattered and took off in different directions. And one of the soldiers looks at me, he goes, geese. And I go, geese, what are you talking about? They're glowing blue. They're disc shaped. They're in V <laughs> formation, and then they they erratically took off in all kinds of directions. I said, that's not geese. Yeah. Well, anyway, in 1976, another UFO experience that I had, I had an ex, ex-girlfriend named Helen Lang, and this actually made the newspapers in Sacramento B. Anyway, I was watching TV in the bedroom, and I was—I I can't even tell you what I was watching. I was watching the comic with Dick, Dick Van Dyke, and she yeah, comes screaming and mm-hmm. running into the apartment, and says, "Paul, Paul, there was a UFO hovering above me, two hundred feet," and she was all hysterically crazy, and I said, "You know, I don't believe that," and she goes, "No, it really happened." And I said, okay, if it really happened, I'm going to drive you to the Sacramento Sheriff's Office, and you're going to make a report. And she goes, okay. So I take her to the Sacramento Sheriff's Department, and they gave her an 800 number. That 800 number was the Center of UFO Studies in Chicago. And we left a message, and that was the end of it. Then one week later, I get a phone call from Dr. J. Allen Hynek. And at that time, I didn't even know who he was. But I was talking to him. He goes, I need to talk to Helen Lane. And I go, I broke up with Helen Lane. I actually broke up with her. So we just didn't get along. And he goes, oh, that's terrible. He goes, is there any way you can, we can, I can get a hold of her? I said, no, you know, I don't have her phone number anymore. You know? So, he says, do you know what the UFO looked like? I said, she actually drew me a picture. He goes, can you send me that picture? So I did. 
And, the, uh, and I told him, I said, you know what? I said, in 1974, I had a UFO experience. And I told him about my UFO experience. And so he took a report on that, along with Helen Lang's picture. And um, Dr. Alan Heine, right, he talked to the Sacramento Bee and come to find out on that night, two other people in two different areas in Sacramento saw the very same UFO. So what Helen saw was real because two other people yeah. in two different areas uh-huh. saw that same UFO. So that was really interesting. And that was my association with Dr. J. Allen Heine. Hmm. Really interesting. And, oh. and UFOs are seen at military installations all the yeah, time. Yes. Oh yeah, all that's, the time. Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. I mean, I've I've heard a lot of stories. I know people work at like submarine bay pens bases here in Scotland, and they're seeing some strange things at night, some strange glowing orbs at night and stuff like that. And they're always told, "Don't speak about it. Don't speak about it." Because obviously, maybe their commanders or that are maybe scared. But I mean, you think about it, these nuclear submarines that are sitting and these things just appear. And it makes you wonder if they're just keeping an eye on us and just we're just keeping dabs or don't you dare use any of the nuclear weapons kind of thing. But see, going back to Mount Shasta, I mean, it's a, it's a place that I've always been fascinated with. Um, and I know, I know Dakota here, Dakota's a, you're fascinated with Mount Shasta. What's, what kind of other evidence did you, did you get there? Did you get any kind of strange UFO evidence when you were there? Did you see the anything? Only, the only evidence I got was that one picture of the UFO behind uh, Sylvia Brown's secretary. Yeah. And that's Holly DeLotter. De <clears throat> so she's listening to the show. She's the one... Is I give her credit for knowing that knowing that yeah. there was something behind her, and and, um, and then the 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 three rocks being thrown into the creek, you know, answering to my wood wood on wood uh, communication. So see, mm. it's it's fast. It fascinates me that that mountain. There's just something special about that mountain that which I can't put my hand on. Do you, would you like to take over here because I know that. You, you know more about this. Well, Mount Shasta, obviously, like I said before, that's yeah. a bucket list location. I think it's oh, yeah. say it was like the 14th most active location in North America when it comes to UFOs. But another individual I've been fascinated by the work is the CE5 protocols by Dr. Stephen Greer, and he has stuff like that from Mount Shasta as well. Yeah. What do you think about these active communication efforts to try to get civilians involved? I mean, I, I think that anybody who's interested in UFOs should get involved. I mean, we have the right to know what's going on. Um, the military suppresses this information because they don't want society to, to, to collapse. They don't want our religions to collapse. And I don't think that's going to happen. I think that now we're at a level where we're going to be able to accept these type of information. And so I think the military should start disclosing uh, more of the information on UFOs and what they know. Uh-huh. It's it's going to come out eventually. I think it is going to come out eventually. Because they kind of keep it, as you were talking about, like Elon Musk went to go to like Mars and stuff like that. A lot of these big corporations out there, they want the technology. They want the technology so that it doesn't take like six months to go to seven months to go to Mars. They want technology so that it only takes like ten minutes. Can you imagine? Can you imagine space travel if it only takes you ten minutes to get from the Earth to Mars? The, the resources you can move in that time, the, the interstellar travel. I think it's it has got to come out. I don't know when it's got to come out, but I definitely think that. It's, it is coming soon. I have a question for you actually here, Paul. What about spiritual stuff? Have you ever experienced, like, ghosts? I had to ask the question because when you're... Oh, yeah, I mean, I... 
<clears throat> I did ghosts, demons, you know, the whole oh, works. Gosh, you know? <clears throat> but I got to tell you one thing, though. Okay, I, I'm married to a psychic medium. Oh. And um, she goes by the name of Wishfire. And right. she's really incredible because uh, let's say it comes to ghosts. Um, there was time where we were doing an investigation and she says that the ghost is sitting on the couch. So we, three yes. of us take a picture and there's this mist hovering over the couch. She goes, the ghost is now behind the couch. And with one camera, we take a picture and there's mist behind the couch. But that's not, here's the crazy stuff. Okay, when, as a child, <clears throat> she was actually abducted by a UFO in Auburn, California. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she has a, that's when she became psychic. Uh, she starts seeing ghosts and all this other stuff. And when I first met her and she was telling me this story, I really had a hard time believing it. But when I got, after we got married, there was a time where we're driving down Elk Grove and she says, go into that parking lot right there. I go, why? And she goes, just go in there. Well, the parking lot was empty. She goes, there's something in the sky. I go, I don't see nothing in the sky. She snaps a photograph and she captures three UFOs, disc shaped, bright, very bright. And that picture went viral. It, uh, it got into, well, I work for Phenomena Magazine, but in yeah. England, but it was, it was published there and then it just went all over the place on the internet and everything else. Um, another time we were going through Copperopolis, California, and she goes, there's something in the sky. Again, I don't see nothing in the sky. And she snaps a a photograph and she captures, I'm telling you, a portal in the sky. And it it looks like a Mm -hmm. door in the sky. And she did this like three other times where she didn't capture it on camera. But then she goes, like one time we're driving down I-5 North towards Reading. And she goes, there's a cube in the sky. I go, what? But this time I actually saw it. And then she's trying to take a picture of it, but she didn't capture that one. But she yeah. captured those other pictures. Yeah. And this this is my psychic wife if you can see that but um I see that. Yeah. but yeah she's she's incredible she has this connection to ufos and i don't know how she does it but yeah so hmm. i mean we're still in the game and then we we do ufo hunts so we get together and a, a good crowd of people and we actually watch the skies all night long in gold country where there's a lot of UFOs uh, reported mm. out in that area. Mm. I find that, I find that fascinating about how the spirit, how you met a, a medium and how she's seen so many UFOs. I haven't noticed a lot of people that are into the UFOs are psychic, are psychic, especially my friend here, Dakota, because he's, Stuff that he knows and the stuff that he's witnessed, <laughs> and, and, and it's and, yeah. And, uh. I mean, I've met some amazing people, and I've they've always got like a wee backstory. They've always got like a wee backstory about how then they throw it in at the end that they're, they're psychic. And I said, just throw it in at the end for their psychic, you know, because obviously that is why you can see these beings, Dakota. Oh yeah, uh, and if, and if I when we do investigations, paranormal investigations, I have her point out where the ghost is, and I just don't take her word for it. And she goes, "Oh, there's a ghost." In the room. <laughs> yeah, I don't take her word for it. Then I pull out my digital recorder and I try to get an EVP, yeah. and it seems like she is, always hits the mark. She'll say, "There's a ghost in the corner," or whatever. I do a little EVP check. I go, 
Hello, is there anybody there? I pause, give it time to talk, and I play it right back. And a lot of times I get a response. So that's how we utilize her in our investigations. Well, hey, she's got a good track record. Go for it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a psychic. I'm not a psychic, you know. Uh, people come up to me and they go, hey, what are you feeling? I'm, so I'm not feeling anything, you know, because I'm not a psychic, you know, so, you know. It's God. it's quite inter- it is quite interesting how you've you've met her, though, but how she's seen the UFOs and what you used to do as a job. It's quite interesting oh, yeah. how that's connected, you know. Well, and, uh, that's how she came into my life because she had these paranormal experiences. So she contacted me. Um, they say never date the client, but I I broke that rule and I dated the client. <laughs> and I was a her. <laughs> Oh, been there, man. Been there. <laughs> uh, who, who, are your, who are your spiritual experiences? And I mean, like, in the spiritual sense, the ghost sense. What would you say was the most terrifying thing you've ever experienced? Oh, God. <laughs> um, oh, okay, I'll, I'll t- I've told this story a, a few times, but anyway. There was there was a situation. I was like in in Stockton, California, and I get a phone call, and it's two ladies. They're experiencing a demon in their home. It, it's in the shape of a black mass. It appears about three o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and they said. I said, well, I was a new paranormal investigator. And one thing I learned, you always bring another paranormal investigator with you just in case anything goes wrong. So, but I didn't do that. I was new. I went over there and it was an older woman in her 60s and her goddaughter in her 30s. So when I was doing the uh, investigation, I was interviewing her. She goes, yeah, she goes, the entity actually bites us. And the goddaughter and her were showing me bite marks on her chest area. And I said, I was start wondering, I said, I wonder if they did this to each other, you know? And then they said this black mass would appear in the hallway, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, while I was interviewing her, I swear up and down, her face started distorting into something evil looking. No longer did she look like this nice grandmother person. Now she looked somewhat evil, diabolical. So I didn't, I said, you know, tell me more about this demon. She goes, well, also to get nightmares. I said, what do you get nightmares of? She goes, I have nightmares of killing men. Well, mind you, I was the only man in there. And okay. I, oh, I said, here she comes. yeah, now I'm getting kind of scared, you know? <laughs> and as I got into the interview, then I looked towards the living room and the goddaughter is holding a baseball bat and she has this manacle look on her face and she's going around and around and around with this baseball bat. I said, Oh crap. I need to get out of here. So I got my laptop. I'm running out the door. I said, you know, I'm going to get this to the publisher. This is a great story. I'll be back, which I wasn't planning to come back. And one thing is I'm not afraid of ghosts and I'm not afraid of demons, but I am yeah. definitely afraid of a 30-year-old woman with a baseball bat. Ah! And- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Fair, enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I suppose I suppose a ghost can't really get you, but I say it for the women chasing the baseball bat. Been there, oh, been there. That was that was my scariest moment. That was my yeah. scariest moment. Thank you. For sure. <clears throat> I find it funny as you were telling that story, there was a black shadow that shot out from behind you, and I swore I heard a, a deep voice as you were talking. Oh, really? Like I was trying to confirm it. Wow. I'll have to listen to the playback, see if I can catch it again. But that was 
And I've also noticed it, Chris has been getting a lot of interference as well. Yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's weird because it's weird you say this. Uh, where you've got the, the little figure standing on your bookshelf there, that where the pictures are, it, it, it was weird. It was like your, your camera was trying to focus on something. It was all like pixelated. You know, mm-hmm. the kind of, as if something was, wasn't quite clear, like a bit of perspex, which isn't quite clear. It was something that moved in front of it. And they moved back, and then it just went away again. I don't know if that's what you see in the black mass. This well, happens you know, a they, lot by the people in your show. They they say my house is haunted. Um, mm. We've we've got a few EVPs in this house, but the, I mean they don't really bother me. Um, uh, but every once in a while we see like shadow figures or whatever, but. It's probably because of all the paranormal investigations. You know, we probably brought a few home, so I don't know. And that mm. you see that 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 uh, clown right there. Yeah, that clown is supposed. To, it, it came from a haunted house, and they said that that clown was a haunted item. So, and all kinds of stuff happened in the house. So I took it. But really, not too much happens, you know, in this house. Uh, and so, now yeah. you know about that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Now that you've been on this show, you never know. Oh, yeah. You're going to be having visitations tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so... Dakota was telling me he was telling me a little bit about your backstory that you worked a wee bit with ghost adventures and stuff like that at locations. What kind of locations did you tell them? Oh yeah, I'm I'm in contact with Ghost Adventures, and yeah. they contact me for different places, um, haunted locations where I've gone to, and so I I provide them that information and. I become a location scout or location manager. Yes. And I've worked mm-hmm. with Portals to Hell, Ghost Adventures several times, been on Ghost yes. Adventures once. Um, what? We did a Wait, we did a you... case in Bakes, California with Ghost Adventures. And what was kind of interesting is that the Ghost Adventures crew came with their camera up to the car where we me and Deanna, the Wishfire, we were sitting in the car and they interviewed us in the car. And so I was telling them, yeah, we got some EVPs. You know, the guy uh, says that he's possessed demonically. I gave him a mm-hmm. full submersion baptism, which is a uh, basic form of exorcism. And temporarily, the demon left him, the attachment left him. But then mm-hmm. about a week later, he called me and said that the demon's back. So they were doing this whole interview with me, Aaron and the other two guys. And Zach was in the house talking to the owner. And that footage mysteriously just vanished. And then we're right driving back home. And they were calling me back and saying, we need to do that interview again. But... I mean, the road was crazy. It was like 2, 3 in the morning, and I just said, oh, forget it. So I just headed home. But um, but we, we've gotten a lot of cases for them, I, maybe about nine cases for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there's some absolutely interesting places they've been. I will say that. There's some absolutely very intriguing places they've been. I mean... That what you told us about how the footage disappeared. That's actually quite. That's that's happened to have some friends of mine. They've been done paranormal investigations, and then they've went home, and all their cards are like white. All their SD cards are like white, and it's it's like, it's so frustrating because I know somebody it happened to just last week. They went to a location, they found them, they watched it in the car, that well, they watched it back in the car. They woke up the next day, and it was all gone, all gone. Every bit of information. And it makes you wonder, was there something there that the spirits didn't want you to see? Did you capture something that they did not want you to get your hands on? You know, it's 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 actually quite scary stuff, you know. It's, and people are watching this that are thinking of getting into the paranormal field. 
think twice before you start getting into this stuff because you might end up bringing something home that's not exactly the nicest. Mm. Oh, yeah. And they, uh, and they had professional equipment. It, it was no reason for that equipment to be shut down. And then they said that they were having that problem all through that whole case where their equipment was shutting down. So I don't know. It was yeah. weird. Mm, definitely Strange something thing. there that's going on yeah 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 i mean it's oh god it, i'm just I've, I've got a vision in my head the new you getting chased by a baseball bat <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh um, running out that door boy <laughs> uh, but i've done a little, i've done a lot of interesting cases i went to aruba and uh, searched for the a blonde haired ghost that they believe was Natalie Holloway, the victim. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So and you guys know that case, right? Natalie Holloway? I'll feel the yeah. Yeah. And so when I went over there, I talked to a lot of people and they were saying that uh, the guy Johan or I forget what his name was. Johan's father helped mm-hmm. him get rid of the body by taking the body on the boat and dumping it into the water. So they already knew all this information. In fact, I had placed that information into my article. And then mm-hmm. it was suggested by the Aruba police that something like that did happen. And a group of people went with me to uh, walk around they showed me the the nightclub where uh, Johan had met Nellie mm-hmm. Holloway, and they took they took me to a location on the beach where they believe Nellie Holloway uh, received some type of uh, 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 date rape uh, drug, and yeah. she started going into convulsion. She threw up. And she died on that beach. So I try to do some EVP work over there. And I, I think it about maybe eight times I did EVPs and nothing. And on the ninth EVP, I got a female's voice saying, help me. So oh, I believe that could have been Natalie Holloway. So, yeah. Did you... Did you think he maybe going back today and maybe doing like the Lord's Prayer or something like that? Maybe to help her cross. Say that again, Christopher. Did you think did you think he going back to the location and maybe doing the Lord's Prayer or maybe like telling her to go to the light and stuff like that? Help her cross. Oh yeah. Um we bl- well, I did a blessing of that area yeah. and stuff like that. So, you know, trying to put her a spirit to rest, you know, I mean, that was probably a very horrible, horrible ordeal that young lady went through. So it was very shocking that we did get that female voice because everybody was quiet. You know, I'm saying EVP session, we're doing it now. Everyone's quiet. And then boom, there's a female voice and a saying, help me. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully she's Those crossed. And get, she's, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just hopefully she's crossed. So, what's what's next for you, Paul? Are you going to any strange locations around this amazing world? Well, right now it seems like uh, um, I'm doing a lot of book reviews. Um, yeah. I got this one company that sends me these paranormal books for free. They want me to review them, so we're doing that. I just got a book out. Um, I'll show you the book in just a couple of minutes here. And um, uh, I still write articles. So I, so I work for Outer Limits Magazine, Phenomenon Magazine, and Paranormal Underground Magazine. So that keeps me busy. Um, I get phone calls from out of state. And I, I'm not rich where I can just jump on an airplane and go out yeah. of state. But if the story is interesting... I record it, so and I put the story into my book. So 
that keeps me busy uh, doing shows like this keeps me busy. Um, we did five investigations of ver- uh, local bars where there was haunting activity. So me and Wishfire, we went to these five different bars to see if we can get any kind of paranormal evidence. And in two out of five, we got evidence. So, And they're in the old part of Sacramento, so there's all kinds of hunting activity in that area anyway. So that kept us, you know, busy too. Nice. So, yeah. That's very interesting. Mm, that's I'll, uh, I'll maybe think you get your book. Where can, we, where can we get the book and what's it called? Oh, okay. Let me show you the book. Okay, hold on. Keeping it by the clown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is the book right here. And let me explain what the pictures are. Anyway, the book, <laughs> the book is Sacramento Paranormal Investigations, HPI, TARDIS, Time Travel, and the Paranormal. So mm. if you're a Doctor Who fan, we have some information about the TARDIS and time travel and some paranormal mm-hmm. stories. And on the back of it is Dracula. And Dracula is ready to bite the neck of Wishfire. That's her. Uh, she's the Black Rose. Hoppy mm-hmm. and the Demon Warrior, which is me. And I have oh. various artists. And, mm-hmm. and, and so anyway, that's my Let latest book. And, then, and all you have to do, if you want to find my books, just Google Paul Dale Roberts books, and you'll right. they'll okay. take you to Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Some of the books are well. This one's in Barnes and Nobles now, so mm. Mm. Yeah, well, I'll definitely check them out. I definitely will. Dakota, would you like to ask anything before the end? Well, before we go, being that there is definitely a shift going on to where more and more people are starting to be open-minded towards the subject of ufos paranormal i mean i've even had case requests come in from active psychiatric hospitals trying to figure out help honestly my question is how do i do that without triggering triggering a patient's psychotic episode because it seemed like they were be centered on specific patients and even the doctors were like we're gonna need some help on this this ain't normal and what would be your advice to individuals who may be interested in starting out in the paranormal because they've either had their own experiences or curiosity is getting the better of them? Well, a lot of people, they, they come up to me and they say, hey, yeah, I want to be a paranormal investigator, but I'm scared that I'm going to bring something back home. Um, Little do they realize that every single day almost that you go into a haunted place. I mean, like we have an area called Old Sacramento. And Old Sacramento is very, very haunted. In fact, Ghost Adventures did a a thing over there, Old Sacramento and the tunnels Mm -hmm. and all that. And they go into all these establishments and none of those ghosts are going to follow them home. They're happy where they're at. You know, so they shouldn't have to worry about that. So if you're, you want to be a paranormal investigator, I suggest, you know, go ahead and and get, let's say, a digital recorder. Start off with that. Take a lot of pictures and go into establishments that supposedly are haunted. And you'll, um, they, like we have a place over here and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a bunch of uh, holes in the ground and it's a lot of granite. And they mm-hmm. use that granite to make the state capital. Well, back in the 1800s, a lot of miners uh, who were mining that granite died mm-hmm. because of mm-hmm. very dangerous work. Mm-hmm. That area is haunted. And there's a lot of areas there that are quiet. So you can try to do EVP work, take some pictures, go to places like that. And, you know, you you don't have to wait for uh, someone to call you and say, my house is haunted, come over and investigate. 
there's so many places in the world to investigate. Um, there's a, 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 this one cave that you can actually go into, and there's a lot of people that fell into that cave and died. That place is very haunted. So I would go to public places that are known to be haunted and start doing your own investigation. And when you get better at it, start putting yourself out there and get phone calls from people who say, hey, my place is haunted. I got a demon in the house. And and then you can, you know, start being a full-time paranormal investigator. That's that's quite interesting that i mean the demon thing i must say that there's there's no that many a lot of people think there's loads of demons out there but i, I would say I, i've never came across one i hope i never do <laughs> i would <laughs> do, do the bit chase with a woman with a baseball bat then come in contact with something like that but always be very very careful when it comes to like demonic stuff is that right dakota oh yeah in my experience, uh, just be respectful. Even demonics respect manners. Don't start poking mm-hmm. it because they will try to take you out. And mind you, I had my own experience where it led to an exorcism, <laughs> and the thing broke free. But before we can finish it off, it ran off and tracked me down in my home, pinned me against the wall, and started trying to choke me to death. Mind you, I'm six foot seven and almost four hundred pounds, and this thing lifted me like I was nothing. Wow. Just simply be respectful to the home and house. And nine times out of ten, the negative reports you're going to get in, yes, it's probably going to be a pissed off spirit, but there's going to be some pretty yeah. legitimate reasons why things are yeah. happening the way they are. To be respectful, be mindful of all the possibilities, because let's face it, the last three, four years alone proved that. Nothing's impossible anymore. <laughs> and that's so true. That's so true, Dakota. That's true. And one of the things that I do when we do a paranormal investigation, afterwards we do a Roman Catholic, well, I perform a Roman Catholic cleansing of the house. Okay. Wishfire does a metaphysical cleansing. She even leaves a little care package. It has smudge wands and all that other stuff in there. And also, too, if someone says, I have an attachment, I give them a full submersion baptism, which is a basic form of exorcism. And the attachment immediately leaves. And I'm not ordained, but I did consult two priests, got information on how to do Roman Catholic cleansing. And I'm very successful with that. And the... Full submersion baptism, which a lot of ghost hunting groups don't do, I do. And I was very surprised, you know, when I get a phone call and they said, hey, you know, the attachment I had, it's gone, Paul. Your your baptism worked. So, and I'm not a real religious guy, but I do believe in like in angels, that angels do watch yeah. over us. Mm-hmm. And... I was very surprised that my Catholic house blessings work. I was very surprised that my baptisms work. And they gave me the nickname of the demon warrior. So that's what I do. It's it's, it's quite interesting to say that because people might think their house is haunted, but in actual fact it's them that's haunted. They have picked up an attachment (coughs) to somewhere and their house maybe isn't it haunted, it's them that the spirits clung on to. So it doesn't matter if they move house, they, they'll go with them. Once mm-hmm. attached to them, so that's a good idea, mm-hmm. is doing, doing, a, doing that, yeah. yeah. Well, well. Not that puts it pretty well, because, like I said, nothing's truly ever impossible. Don't ever deny that something strange could be going on. But at the same time, simply just be respectful and show kindness. Because, let's face it, world's getting crazier by the day. You know, oh. last thing we need is yeah. we at each other's throats on top of it. Yeah. 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 And I would like to say, you Paul, guys... thank you. Oh, the... mm-hmm. no, you're no. welcome. Oh, no. I, I... And you guys know about living ghosts, right? 
living ghosts. Mm-hmm. Living ghosts? No, you don't have to tell us about that. Before we go. Is that like a coma patient? <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you what a living ghost is, okay? Um, and we actually experienced some of this in our investigations, but in 1974 in Chicago, Illinois, this couple moved into this house. And about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, they would see a man manifest and walk over to the couch. A woman would manifest, and he started slapping her. Right. So they went to a block party, and the host of the block party says, yeah, we do this every year. Here's our photo album, and you can look at some of the pictures. And as the lady was looking at the picture, she, she goes, oh, my God, those are the ghosts in my house. I see this man and woman, and he's slapping her. And the guy looks at her, the host looks at her and goes, what? What are you talking about? He goes, they did live in your house. The police were there all the time. They got a divorce. He lives five blocks down the road, and she lives out of state. <laughs> and he goes, they're uh... very much alive. And they, what happened was they projected so much negative energy into the atmosphere uh, that that incident replays itself over and over and over again. Living ghosts. That's, that's kind of like the stone mm, fake I, theory, I have, isn't it? Yeah. I've yeah. heard of that happening. We had, I, I, Chris I, and I actually knew somebody that, that happened. Chris and I actually know somebody who had that happen to him. Is that a an old house they lived in? This person they had a heart attack. You know, they're still going strong nowadays. But apparently, there would be some old friends that still lived in the area. She's moved house since then. He says, "Yeah, I just happened to pass by your house. I thought I saw you in there. It looked like you were having a heart attack." And it just, uh, she's her own haunting. You know, she's still alive and well. Last I checked, you know, it's been a while since we reached out, but nevertheless. But think it, it goes to show, you never know what's yeah. out there and the kind of impacts the things you go through in life will leave. And nevertheless. It shows you if you leave, if you leave like a mark on the, the, the reality of the space time. I mean, you talk you talk about the battlefields in the, 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 the world where, well, let's say, the Civil War took place. If you go at certain that. times, you can hear the like, gunshots. And if you look closely, you might see like soldiers marching off to battle. Maybe that's near spirit. Maybe that's just a recording that the ground's absorbed for the terrible atrocities that happened. Because I, I know people that have done investigations in like Germany and stuff like that, and like places where like, the the war was really really bad, and the, they've experienced the same kind of thing. It's it's actually really interesting. I wonder if you could actually recreate that. I wonder if you could do that yourself. Yeah. Like scientifically, of course. Like recreate it. How do work? you go to recreate it without basically being uh, torturing somebody, though? That's, That's where the issue well, comes in. Well, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking, we need a test subject. We need a test subject. Come on. Oh yeah, and it, it, it doesn't it doesn't have to just be negative energy, but it could be yeah. positive energy, and the, we've done yeah. cases where it was actually positive energy. Yeah, so yeah. it was it was a case over at Evangeline's, which was a, a costume shop, and back in the seventies, the third floor was Deal Mills, which was a discotheque, and people. Yeah. Late at night, sometimes hear feet shuffling, laughter, uh-huh. music, disco yeah. music, and again, living ghosts. Something was positive was blasted into the atmosphere and replaced itself over and over again. There you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. I bet it's Saturday night fever for you there. Oh God! <laughs> I, to bring that up. I, I, I knew the second the disco film. caught up, he was going to be obsessive. <laughs> I, I, everybody's seen the film Saturday Night Fever and all that, drawing Travolta with his flare trousers and stuff. It's an iconic film, that you know. 
Oh. Yeah, and I could be I could be the one the living ghosts in the Deal Mills, you know. Oh. Back in the seventies I used to go there, you know, so there could be a security guard walking through there as we speak. <coughs> a guy dancing away, you know. Not be you. <laughs> you know. Oh, but I would oh, just honest, I would need to say, Paul, thank you so much for coming on the show. And we'll need to get oh, you back you. one day again. And hopefully people that watch this when it's released, um, please buy his book. I know I'm going to go and check it out because I like dressing things like that. So Dakota, would you? It's the end before we go. I will say thank you definitely for coming on. This has definitely been one of our more interesting interviews. And for those of you interested in learning more about Paul's work, I was looking it up during the show. Yes, the disco thing is real. It was one of the first things that came up. <laughs> <laughs> but all the all the links are it will be in the description, and if you're on a platform, yeah. just, just you'll be able to find him pretty easily. He's probably one of our more uh, publicized guests that we've had on. We've had some popular people yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'm definitely going to look that up. I'm going to look up your disco stuff because that fascinates me. The dancing ghost hunter. What, what more could you possibly want? You know? <laughs> uh. Oh my God. Christopher, Dakota, thank you so much for having me on the show. It was a pleasure. Yeah. I had anytime. a blast. Right. Any, anytime, my friend. Anytime. So, Dakota, shall we leave the show and we'll catch you all tomorrow, guys? That, Bye. Yeah. All right. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the Bald and Bonkers show. If you enjoyed the show and want to show your support, head over to our website at baldandbonkers.net. There, you'll find our merch, services, and more. Thanks for being part of the Bald and Bonkers family, and we'll see you on the next episode. And remember, always keep...